This week on the county line, we show you the best places to watch the seasons change. Along with how the borough will deal with the leaf invasion. Good evening and welcome to the County Line. I'm Brittany Grego. And I'm Drew Trifilis. The temperature grows colder as we head closer and closer each day to winter. But that doesn't mean you can't enjoy the fall season. Plenty of things to do during fall include hay rides and haunted houses. Actually, one of the best things to do sits right outside your door. The best time to enjoy the fall foliage is mid-October when the fall colors resemble a painting in the Lawrence and Mercer County areas. But this year, the leaves colors may appear muted due to the hot, dry summer. Instead of seeing reds and oranges, you may see more yellows and browns. The middle of October marks the best leaf viewing experiences. However, predicting the autumn season can be tricky. In fact, some trees right now are still clinging to a lot of green leaves. Moraine and McConnell's Mill State Park Assistant Manager Jeremy Reckich says predicting the fall foliage is like predicting the weather. Tons of variables come into play, such as the shortening of days and the temperatures at night. But if you were looking for some place around the area to view some of the fall colors, check out Moraine and McConnell's Mill State Parks. As the leaves change from green to the beautiful reds and oranges of the fall season, they eventually fall off their branches into yards, sidewalks, and streets. Here in New Wilmington, the borough keeps a special piece of equipment handy to solve this problem. Area children nickname the street cleaner Snuffleupagus. It picks up the fallen leaves quickly and efficiently without burning them, plus saves an entire day of raking them up. Town uh, named the Snuffleupagus. Uh, I believe that came from a Sesame Street character, and um, kind of got its name. Just um, the old machine. Um, the kids uh, always just start naming itself Snuffleupagus, so we uh, we just kind of put the name on it and <laughs> adapted that name. So this one's actually the new one's called uh, Snuffleupagus too. On the old machine, we used to get a lot of strange looks. People, the local people were used to it, but people that weren't familiar with it, they, they didn't know what kind of spaceship it was landing. What, what exactly happens inside the truck? Like once it gets sucked up, is there, does it get compressed? Or does well, it it, they don't, there's nothing in there that, that, that um, causes it to compress outside of just the normal bounce of the truck and the force of the leaves blowing into the box. I mean, they blow in there with, at a high, very high velocity. And, uh, it, it packs them in pretty hard. On a day like today, with the leaves being wet, yeah, the truck will get very heavy. And uh, like I say, we will pick up uh, pumpkins at the end of the season. Uh, it'll suck pumpkins up if there's a brick in the like or a rock or, or something. Unfortunately, it'll pick them up. No, it, it doesn't. It's, it's very hard on our equipment, but it's got a lot of, lot of, lot of suction. Okay. Oh, a little, um, I'm not sure what kind of dog it was, but it was out, uh, wasn't uh, real happy that I was there sucking the leaves, and uh, <laughs> it was barking around the chute, and I, I 
I was in a hurry. I got to shoot and lift it up in the air. If I hadn't got it up, why well, he might have been gone. It, uh, it's very powerful. It would have picked him. They would have picked him up real quick. Newcastle and Ashanic Township set trick-or-treating hours. This year, trick-or-treating takes place on Halloween. Children can roam around collecting candy from members of the community on Sunday, October 31st from 5 to 7 p.m. For the, for the New Wilmington area, the traditional daylight festivities will run Saturday, October 30th before the annual Halloween parade. Although different from other areas, the town continues to keep in mind the, sa the safety of its youth. Trick or treat hours run from 2 to 4 p.m. The parade follows on Market Street. A Newcastle Park becomes haunted on October 21st. For just $12, you can enjoy a creepy hayride, tour the haunted house, or if that does not strike your fancy, the train station will show scary movies throughout the evening. Spooky snacks will also be available. The gates open at 6.30 p.m., and the nightmare will remain in Lawrence County until November 6th. Coming up on the county line, we discuss who's running for the upcoming Lawrence and Mercer County elections. And the county line's Bradford Eric takes us into the tranquil environment of the area spiritual center. <laughs> Mercer County gears up for the general election on November 2nd. Voters can cast their votes from 7 o'clock a.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. The three races in Mercer County for the general election include representative in Congress 3rd District, senator in the General Assembly 50th District, and representative in the General Assembly 7th District. The candidates for the representative in Congress 3rd District are Kathy Dow Kemper of the Democratic Party and Mike Kelly of the Republican Party. For the senator in General Assembly 50th District, the candidates are Bob Robbins of the Democratic Republican Party and Roberta Biros as the Independent. Rounding out the state elections for the representative in the General Assembly 7th District is Mark Longetti. He is the Republican Democratic candidate who is running unopposed. Lawrence County also has a few general elections coming up in November. Running for the representative of Congress in the 4th District is current representative Jason Altmeyer, who faces Keith Rothfuss. Republican Rothfuss pledges to repeal Obamacare and not to raise taxes. Chris Sonato is also on the ballot for senator in the General Assembly in the 9th District. He is unopposed. The Pole Rovers will return this year. Four Lawrence County high schoolers will have the opportunity to help out with the local election process. These students are chosen by their teachers to attend the county election office on November 2nd. Some use the experience as part of their senior projects, while others receive a small paycheck. The Villa Maria Education and Spirituality Center bridges the gap between science and religion. Often at odds with each other, science and religion come together harmoniously across the sprawling several hundred acre complex. The county line's Bradford Eric visited the Education and Spirituality Center to tell us what they do there and how we can find our inner spirituality. Nature and religion. Science and spirituality. Sound like a big fight to you? That isn't the case at the Villa Maria Education and Spirituality Center. Located on a sprawling tract of land in Villa Maria, Lawrence County, the first thing one notices immediately is how quiet it is. Two-year president of the center, Jim Murhud, explains the initial reaction of visitors. Yeah, you know, a lot of people say as soon as they walk onto the campus that it, it just calms them down. It's, 
it's a very peaceful and relaxing place. The Villa Maria Center was founded by the Sisters of the Humility of Mary in 1864. With 175 current sisters and 50 residing at the center, the collection of buildings and gardens is the center of the organization. In traditional terms, this would be called the mother house for the sisters. Um, so this is their home, and uh, everything they do, that they do originates here. Um, uh, so the sisters that do not live here, they either live in apartments um, or, uh, or other small houses, but uh, they don't have any other facilities that are like this one. The center hosts a variety of programs, from the fun and playful youth and family retreats to the quiet, self-meditative adult retreats. With meeting spaces, overnight lodging accommodations, and a cafeteria, Jim says the center caters to all religions, not just Christianity. We have allowed other religions to come and use the space uh, for their own formation. We aren't trained to run their programs uh, because, you know, we're not Jewish, we're not Hindu, we're not Muslim. Uh, but they, they can certainly bring their own speakers and, and we'll provide them space and hospitality to do that. In addition to spiritual programs here at the Villa Maria Education and Spirituality Center, a host of environmental programs are offered as well at the self-sustaining farm here located on the property. Covering a large portion of the 726 acres is a farm providing organic beef, sheep, berries, fruits, and vegetables. 25% of the food produced is given to local soup kitchens and food pantries. The peaceful nature of the Villa Maria Center enables science and religion to coexist. We think that they blend quite nicely. Um, we think that uh, uh, if, if science discovers any truth at all, the truth is, has, was placed there by God. You know? And uh, so we think there's a real harmony between faith and science. At the Villa Maria Education and Spirituality Center, I'm Bradford Eric for the County Line. Stay tuned to the county line to learn a little more about a local winery. This and Titan Town Sports is on the way. The little town of Volant is home to over 30 small businesses. These vary from craft stores, restaurants, ice cream parlors, and bakeries. But there is one type of business that is all its own, the Volant Mail Winery. Brittany, did you know that the winery is home to over 25 homemade wines? Is it really? It is. Owner of the winery, Greg Rhodes, is the only commercial grower in this area of the United States to carry some of his selections. The Westminster Cable Network visits the mill to learn more on the history behind the business. Try that apple. I started making wine as a 15-year-old kid in my high school principal's basement. That's 49 years this fall. If I live one more year, I'll have 50 years of this. Uh, been a lot of fun. We have about 25 different kinds of wine on the board. Everything on that board I have grown except for cranberries. I strictly make the wine, pick the grapes, see to it the vineyards are done, uh, crush them, press them, ferment them, see to it it's ready to put in the bottle. Another one here on the board there that is called, called Elderweiss. It is the next one down from Wellington White. That is a German Rhine wine that I am the only commercial grower of in this entire part of the United States. There's nobody else grows that wine this side of the state of Nebraska. Bring it and this is primarily what you buy in the state store, same thing. Here, it's 100% the product. There is no cutting it with cheap garbage. The Amish Dutch girls do all my pruning, planting, and picking. They are very good workers. They get paid well. Uh, they look forward to it because they they're making excellent money at it. And then we do all everything else in the question.
on the oldest son because we run this. He, he's the one in charge of all this out here. He takes care of all this. My authority ends at those swinging doors. I strictly make the wine. Interesting, him because anytime in a family business you have disputes and you know, the real problem you have is getting away from the business and having a general discussion on anything else. Always makes an impression when somebody calls, says they know him or been here. Yeah, they always know who he was. Yeah. Well, he's in the vineyard, but we have a lot of labor. He doesn't so much do the labor part of it anymore. He manages a little bit more of what we're doing. Well, so my oldest son and I have this one. And friends and I had the first one, and the old son and I have now gone down here to uh, Seven Fields, built another outlet down there. So, yes, the families are in the business. The winery has been in business since 2005 and is open seven days a week. You can stop in and enjoy a bottle of your favorite wine with cheese and crackers along the Neshanic Creek. You can also tour the winery or enjoy a wine tasting of all the selections. Coming up next on the County Line, all your latest sports action in Titan Town Sports. And later, two County Line reporters visit Cool Springs Corn Maze to see how scary it really is. I am a father, a husband, Army retiree, and a student at Westminster College. It was nice finding a college so close to home with high academics, which is going to put me in the job market right after graduation. If I was to tell another adult student why to come in Westminster, I'd tell them for the academics, the one on one personalization they'll to get with their instructor, the small classroom experience. I know with this college degree, it's going to open a lot of doors for me. My kids are supportive of me going back to college. So when I get good grades, they're all happy. They, they're like, way to go, Dad. Welcome to Titan Town Sports. I'm Tyrell Sight. Growing up in New Wilmington, I was raised a Greyhounds fan and regularly attended many football games. Last week, Kate Altman and I headed out to the Wilmington versus Hickory game to see just how passionate the Greyhounds fans are. Friday night, a local town comes alive to cheer on their beloved Greyhounds. Each fan comes for their own reasons. I come to the football games because I have a grandson playing and two step-grandsons playing. My sons both played here. My brother and I both played here. Others come because they have jobs to fulfill. <laughs> Some fans even have special items to bring the team good luck. These are my dog biscuits. They're my third pair. I think they bring the team good luck, so I wear them. I wore them to states. Did you make them yourself? No, a friend of mine, Susie Smith, makes them. And um, I actually had to get a third pair because my dog has eaten two of my other pairs. I love them. Yeah. Not only do Hounds fans have some crazy traditions, but they also help power the team to victory with their cheering. <laughs> shows their excitement in different ways. When it comes to hound football, nothing is more important. Probably the time I dropped my youngest through the bleachers because I got so excited. I have a habit of hitting people. In one game, I jumped up and dropped my youngest. She was one right down through the bleachers, and there she was dangling on a bar. So that was a good one. When the game finally begins and the team takes the field, you will not find a more enthusiastic crowd. Sports. I'm Kate Altman. Well, 
welcome to Titan Town Sports. I'm Tyrell Sipe here along with Sean Christofferson. And Sean was a member of the Wilmington Greyhounds football team and currently plays for the Westminster Titans football team. So, Sean, uh, tell us a little bit about the year that you played on the state championship team for Wilmington. Um, it was just like it was meant to be for the team to go to states. I mean, we were in so many close games and close encounters and overtime, double overtime. And it just seemed like um, destiny that we won. I mean, it was pretty amazing. Right, and that was your junior season that you won yes. in the States? In my junior season, I only started on offense. I didn't play defense at all, but it was a lot of fun. Um, were the fans always uh, behind you guys? Do you think that they were kind of like, uh, they helped you guys make it that far? Oh, definitely. I mean, they, um, some of our farthest away games, two and a half, three hours away, and then even the state game, which was like five and a half hours away, they were always there. We always had more fans than the home teams did, even when we were away. So, I mean, that's great hearing them in the stands and yelling and screaming. It helped a lot. Um, uh, how was it like after you guys won the championship with the fans, like coming back to New Wilmington from Hershey? <laughs> uh, was there a big party? Yeah, I mean, it was crazy. We got back around 12:30 that night, and um, there were the gym was full of people, the streets were full of people. We were riding in on top of a fire truck and people were spraying champagne on us and everything. It was like it was like winning the Super Bowl. I mean it was crazy. Uh, and they I know the school has a tradition that you guys do like when you win District Ten, the fire trucks take you guys through town, is that right? Yeah, they um we used to when I was a freshman and a sophomore we were allowed to ride on top of them for districts if we won, but then they declared that that was too dangerous to do so they stopped doing that my junior year until we won states. Then we were allowed to do it again because it was a bigger deal, I guess. And I'll ask you one more question, Sean. How would you compare the Wilmington fans with fans of other teams in this area? Oh, they're the best. I mean, very supportive, and you can always hear them over all the other noise, all the other fans, everything. They're just very dedicated, more so than any other fan group I've ever seen. All right, well, thank you, Sean, and thank you for being with us here on Titan Town Sports. That's Sean Christofferson, and uh, we're going to get you back now to more County Line. My name is Rick Dorman, and I work in higher education. Parents ask me which colleges they should consider for their children. I know they're looking for an advantage. Like merit scholarships, which could total $80,000. Opportunity for student involvement, or even dedicated personal faculty. And as president of Westminster College, I can assure them that their child will gain that here. So if you want an advantage, consider Westminster. In this week's On the Road segment, the County Line's Corey Emanuel and Dave Nicholson travel to Cool Springs Corn Maze and Farm Market. You'll be amazed at the amount of activities to do with Cool Springs offering more attractions than ever before. I'm Corey Emanuel. And I'm David Nicholson. And for this week's On the Road, we take you to Cool Springs Corn Maze in Mercer, Pennsylvania. The Cool Springs Corn Maze spans over 12 acres of land. Being a fun family event, we brought some friends with us so they could help us through the maze. Dave has a tip of his own for navigating through the labyrinth. So people don't really think about it when they go into a maze. You've got to leave a trail to get back. Spooky. <laughs> However, Dave's strategy proved unsuccessful.
After we escaped the maze, we saw what else Cool Springs has to offer. This beautiful waterfall is not only aesthetic, the water runs into a sifting mill for gems. The wonderful landscape was accented by a few friendly goats as well. Nearby, the pedal car tractor raceway proved to be too much for this gentleman. Meanwhile, Corey had to find on his own on the 40-foot slide. I'm too old for that. How was it, Corey? <laughs> too much fun. Too much. It goes real fast. And then you hit the, the bottom. We had a great time today here at Cool Springs. We'll see you next week. I'm Corey Manuel. And I'm David Nicholson for On, On the, the Road. Road. For more information, visit their website at coolspringsmaze.com or visit their Facebook page. They would also like to remind you to bring your, flash, to bring your flashlights if you plan on visiting after dark. Westminster Celebrity Series brings in Jim Brickman to tickle the ivories this November. The pop pianist is creating a musical getaway to help stressed audiences enjoy the holiday season. Brickman plans to play solo on the piano as well as being accompanied vocally by a few guests. The Ohio native is known for his two Grammy nods, six gold and platinum albums, and 28 top charted radio hits. The concert is scheduled for November 30th. Tickets range from $25 to $45. Please call the Westminster box office for further ticket information. For over a decade, Cheeseman Fright Farm in Butler County has been bringing haunting entertainment during every Halloween season. The ghosts and ghouls put a chill in the night air in this physically demanding attraction filled with intense audio and visual effects. It is open on weekends till October 31st. Tickets are $12 a piece, but group discounts are available. For more information, visit CheesemanFrightFarm.com. Looking for a terror-filled time this Halloween season? Then Sharon, PA is the place to go. Ghoul Mansion opens its doors this Halloween for the horror fans of the area. It will be open each weekend until October 31st. Tours will begin at sundown. If you dare to enter, the new attraction, Carn Evil, will provide plenty of thrills and chills. Tickets are $10 for adults and $7 for children. You can purchase tickets online at ghoulmansion.com or at the door. Well, that's the news for tonight's edition of the County Line. Be sure to check WCN247.com for all your local campus and community updates. And we'll see you next week for another edition of the County Line, as well as all the latest sports action in Titantown Sports. Good night. Good night.